now let's see the development of phase which is a favorite question for all the exams so before going directly into the development of phase just have a recap of how the embryonic disc is now looking like by the end of third week we know that the embryonic disc is made up of three layers the ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm and it's a ridge like a sandwich and we know that there are two sides so this is the uh, view from above where you can see the ectoderm and anteriorly you can see the precordial plate this is called the precordial plate and posteriorly you have the cloacal membrane precordial plate anteriorly at the cephalic end and cloacal membrane at the caudal end and between the cephalic end and caudal end that is between the precordial plate and the cloacal membrane there is a tube formation that is called neural tube underlying that you have the notochord so these are the two tubes which you get within the intra embryonic mesoderm now why i mention this is suppose you are going to take a section at this level a line passing through the midline this is how it will look like now this is the cephalic end so here it will be the cephalic end and this is the caudal end and so this is the caudal end so at these two points you can see that the intra embryonic mesoderm is not going in between the ectoderm and endoderm so cephalic end gives rise to this point you call it as precordial plate and caudal end this is called the cloacal membrane and the mesoderm lying in front of the precordial plate it is the region from where you have the formation of heart so, so this is called pericardial bar so this is seen at the cephalic end in front of the precordial plate and between the precordial plate and cloacal membrane you have the neural tube within the intra embryonic mesoderm so till now by the end of third week the embryonic disc is just in the form of a disc but if it continues like that it will be really funny to see the developing human being because the mouth will be here and above the mouth you have the heart so mouth will be here and above the mouth you have the heart so in order to bring the pericardial region into the adult position there should be some sort of folding for the embryo so i am now just uh, mentioning about the folding which is happening at the cephalic end i am not going into the details of folding just we fo we are now focusing on the folding at the cephalic end so in order to bring this pericardial bar into the adult position the embryo should go undergo a folding that is called cranial folding or cephalic folding so this is what is happening this pericardial bar will now bend like this and comes and lie in the position of future heart and this precordial uh, um, plate which is actually the buccopharyngeal membrane will now will be seen anteriorly and there is actually a dip this is the dip this is the dip formed at the ectoderm against the precordial plate or the buccopharyngeal membrane this dip is actually forming the stomodium stomodium which is actually getting transformed into the oral cavity of future mouth so now we can see that the pericardial bar in order to come to the adult position will undergo a folding so that now the um, buccopharyngeal membrane is coming anteriorly and the ectoderm at this region will just form a fold or a pit that is called stomodium which is giving rise to future oral cavity or mouth simultaneously what is happening in this region you can see that this tube neural tube is simultaneously undergoing development in the fourth week and that is developing into brain vesicles so this development of brain vesicles will push a part of mesoderm anteriorly this developing brain vesicles will push a part of mesoderm anteriorly and this is actually called the fronto nasal process fronto nasal process now we can see that the stomodium is bound and uh, above the cephalic end by the fronto nasal process and below you can see the pericardial bar now we are moving on to the development of phase proper so which are the main processes contributing to the formation of a uh, phase so we can see that from above you have the fronto nasal process 
and at the stomodium below the stomodium at the pharyngeal region we know that there are pharyngeal arches so the first arch the first pharyngeal arch is called the mandibular arch and from either side the mandibular arch will be giving rise to the rest of the face so the three components which are giving rise to the development of face are one is the frontonasal process by the word itself it is giving rise to a part of uh, the forehead as well as the nose so frontonasal process from above and the first mandibular arch which is again subdividing into maxillary process and mandibular process from the sides so this cavity is called the stomodium or future oral cavity now we can see that the frontonasal process will start growing down and the mandibular arch will be splitting into two processes first one you call it as maxillary process maxillary process and the next one you call it as mandibular process so maxillary process and mandibular process are the two derivatives of first pharyngeal arch now they will try to get approximated towards the midline but we can see that the maxillary process is not coming closer and getting fused but the mandibular process from either side will come closer and will get fused to form the lower jaw simultaneously what is happening for the frontonasal process we can see that there is a thickening formed in the frontonasal process that region is called nasal placard so a thickening formed in the frontonasal process is called nasal placard and lateral most thickening is actually the lens placard from which you have the formation of future lens inside the eye so this is called lens placard and medially you have the formation of nasal placard once this nasal placard is formed it forms a pit or a groove this nasal placard will get converted into a pit or a groove which will now be communicating with the oral cavity or stomodium and with the formation of the nasal pit the fronto nasal process is actually getting differentiated into a thickening medially and a thickening laterally you can see a thickening in the medial aspect of the uh, nasal pit and a thickening at the lateral aspect of nasal pit so the thickening in the medial aspect of nasal pit you call it as medial nasal process medial nasal process and the thickening at the lateral aspect of the nasal pit you call it as lateral nasal process so medial nasal process and lateral nasal process with the formation of these pits these pits will try to get approximated towards the midline so that this fronto nasal process will get thinned out and narrowed so that the medial nasal processes will be coming and fusing in the midline that is what is going to happen and once these shifts anteriorly the lens placard will come and lie more or less towards the midline now let's see what is happening to the gap between the fronto nasal process and maxillary process we can see that there is a groove developed between the lateral nasal process and maxillary process and you can see that this groove is having a connection between the future the position of eye as well as the stomodium so this groove is called naso optic furrow naso optic furrow so this naso optic furrow is actually the defect or a gap seen between the lateral nasal process and the maxillary process and this groove is actually filled with the ectoderm and this ectoderm will be seen as a cord extending between the future eye and the stomodium and later on this ectodermal cord will canalize to form the nasolacrimal duct so the nasolacrimal duct is a duct which connects the conjunctival sac with the future nasal cavity and it will be opening to the inferior meatus so this nasolacrimal duct is actually formed from the ectodermal cord 
which is filling the groove between the lateral nasal process and the maxillary process. So normally this gap will be actually bridged by the ectodermal proliferation and inside the groove you have the ectodermal cord which will later on canalize to form the nasolacrimal duct and the cranial end of the nasolacrimal duct will be forming the lacrimal sac. That's about this defect. So the, we can see that the maxillary process is again growing towards the midline. The mandibular process already has joined in the midline and got fused to form the lower lip and lower jaw. Now let's see what is happening to the upper lip. Upper lip we can see that the maxillary processes are not coming and joining like the mandibular process. So the upper lip is actually formed from two components. Maxillary processes from the sides and the frontonasal process especially the medial nasal process which are actually getting fused in the midline. So frontonasal process in the midline and two maxillary process from the sides give rise to the upper lip and especially we can see that if you take the upper lip there is a philtrum in the midline. So the philtrum is actually formed from the frontonasal process. But when we talk about the formation of upper lip we can see that Though we talk about fusion of the frontonasal process and maxillary process, the surface of the upper lip is actually, even the philtrum, the region of philtrum is actually covered by the ectoderm derived from the maxillary process. So the entire upper lip skin is actually formed from the ectoderm of the maxillary process. So we can say that it is not the frontonasal process uh, from the frontonasal process you get the ectoderm covering the philtrum. That is the reason why the entire upper lip is actually supplied by the maxillary division of trigeminal. So what about the subdivisions of trigeminal? Trigeminal sensory division which is supplying the face has got three divisions. One is ophthalmic division, one is ophthalmic division, the second one is maxillary division and the third one is mandibular division. These are the three subdivisions of trigeminal nerve which are supplying the face. So the frontonasal process is actually supplied by the ophthalmic division. The maxillary region is supplied by the maxillary division and mandibular region is supplied by the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. So the upper lip though we get uh, the formation of upper lip from the two components maxillary process and frontonasal process since the ectoderm from the maxillary process is covering the philtrum region the entire upper lip is actually supplied by the maxillary division of trigeminal it's not supplied by the frontonasal uh, process uh, i mean the ophthalmic division of uh, trigeminal why because the philtrum though it is formed from the frontonasal process the ectodermal proliferation is the surface is covered from the ectodermal proliferation of the maxillary process. So we can say that now we have the frontonasal process and the maxillary process forming the upper lip. We have the mandibular uh, process joining in the midline to form the lower lip. The maxilla, uh, the maxillary process mainly giving rise to cheek and the frontal frontonasal process the upper part giving rise to forehead and the lateral nasal process giving rise to ala of nose medial nasal process actually forming the tip of nose and the nasal pit which is actually occluded the connection between the nasal pit and the stomodium is actually cut off by the fusion of the medial and lateral nasal process so the nasal pit is now getting converted as the future anterior nostrils. So these are the derivatives formed from the frontonasal process, maxillary process and mandibular process. Suppose if this groove is not getting obliterated, what will happen? If this is not getting obliterated, you can see in a newborn a cleft developed which is connecting between the eyes and the uh, mouth. This, is, this defect is called facial cleft. So if the fusion doesn't happen between the maxillary process and the lateral nasal process, a defect will be seen connecting the uh, conjunctival sac with the mouth and that is called facial cleft. It can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. Suppose 
we can see that the maxillary process and mandibular process in the beginning they are situated very laterally these are called the lateral angles but in course of time as the maxillary process grows towards the midline the lateral angle will also get shifted and the future oral cavity is small compared to the uh, few, uh, previous oral cavity in the beginning so sometimes this fusion won't happen and what will happen in the oral cavity when the child is born will be larger because the fusion is not happening between the maxillary process and mandibular process so the lateral angles will stay at the point of formation and it won't shift to the midline so such condition is called macrostomia macrostomia means larger mouth suppose if there is undue fusion between the maxillary process and mandibular process what will happen these maxillary process and mandibular process will approximate each other and there will be undue fusion between the maxillary and mandibular process so that the oral cavity will be made very small and that smaller oral cavity is called microstomia so macrostomia means larger oral cavity when the maxillary and mandibular process are not fusing accordingly and the lateral angles stay at a distance where that is called macrostomia and if the lateral angle is actually shifting medially by the fusion of maxillary and mandibular process beyond the normal range that condition is called microstomia so you can mention at least these three defects the facial cleft when the nasooptic furrow is not getting obliterated uh, macrostomia when the lateral angles are not getting approximated and microstomia when the lateral angles are approximated beyond the normal range so let's conclude the derivatives of all these processes again fronto nasal process is actually giving rise to forehead and bridge of nose its modifications are the medial nasal process and lateral nasal process medial nasal process will give rise to the tip of nose and philtrum of upper lip and the lateral nasal process will uh, form the ala of nose and the maxillary process is uh, the process from which we have the formation of upper lip and cheek and it is a mandibular process from which we have the formation of lower lip and jaw and we have already seen that the nasolacrimal groove is getting converted into the nasolacrimal duct which connects the conjunctival sac with the inferior meatus and the cephalic end of the nasolacrimal duct is forming the lacrimal sac and uh, the lower end is actually opening into the inferior meatus that's all about the development of face